That's a very good reference. Thank you. So I'm all about I think it's a, is it get it or get in? Oh, you might even get, get it. It's it. I would say it. No, it is it. It's especially in the it 80s. Right. Uh, no, it's, okay. it's definitely it. All right. Well, let's see. i got to pretend that I'm in the right place here in our Studio B. Welcome to Grog Talk. Welcome. Using our most professional voices, this is episode 15. I'm James. I'm Dan. I don't have a radio voice. I don't really have one either. But and I don't have a, a face for TV either. No. So. Well, I should write books. Our, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm a bad writer. The though. Grog book. It's the all. Grog book. We'll get back <laughs> to you in five years. <laughs> grog Talk, the book. The transcripts, the official transcripts well, they, I don't of Grog know. Talk. That could be it. You, you could move segue to that. I don't know who would be the co-host then. That would be, that would be unfortunate. But yeah. uh, So we're, we're going to talk about this. This is episode 15. And um, Dan had a, a, a good idea to, for our next segment, talk about magic items. I don't, think we, I don't think we really spent a whole lot of time on magic items, just in use in combat, and maybe some of the advantages, and we'll go over that again. Um, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to magic items. So we're going to talk about magic items in general, uh, why they're good, and, and how they're supposed to be used rules as wit written and why that's another area of frustration between players and dungeon masters. And in fact, just before we went on, uh, we were talking about a certain spell and how ridiculous it is, but we'll get to that. Uh, and then we're gonna focus on uh, one, one type of magic item, rods, stabs, and wands. And I think at some point we have to go over spells, because I don't think we really went, did we go over spells? I think we went spells over in a very high level, but not really drilled through um, each discipline or each school of spells. So we need to do that at a later time. So uh, let's talk about magic items. And so they are the, they, you know, obviously experience points and money is important from the level, but part of the juice of going for characters and, and DMs is to present lots of magic items. To say that in the standard fantasy land D&D that's out of the box, and when you look at the modules you can buy, they, there's a lot of magic given out, typically. And so the idea is you're going to get a lot of magic items. And uh, that's why people adventure. They, eventually gold has no meaning. It's really magic items. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was in Keeping the Borderlands, which I think we talked about in episode 14, about that beginning part where yep. Guy, Gary Gygax gives what I think is some really good information right. about running a game. I think it's perhaps there where he says, well, you know, this is a tough adventure. If, as like a lot of the adventures, as I think you noted last time as well, were written for large parties. Right. And if you don't have enough players, you can give them some magic items to start with. I think Gygax may have said that in there, but this yeah. notion that you could even start, I, I obviously don't, I would want to avoid that if possible, you can even start the adventure by handing them some magic items. Right, and it could be, that's a great uh, opportunity to, um, you know, temporary lend. I think you, we did that one time in your adventures that you gave us some magic items. We went to see a wizard or something in the forest, and you lent us some magic items. No, 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 no. no. Uh, was that it? was in. Well, you were correct. It wasn't I, I? Dan Gormansky would never do that. Oh, okay. The module did that. Oh, I see. Al Alcastra. It was in. Uh, right. It was Alcastra. Yeah, I think it was so. In the woods. Uh, yes, she could loan you. So that was whoever wrote that adventure was uh, the Ilhedron book. Oh, the Ilhedron? Okay. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, by Judges Guild has that, where yes. So yeah, so you can help out if you think you've got a, a small, if you're a DM and you think the party's not really built very well for the coming adventure, you could, I guess, if you so wanted. Well, and so clearly magic items can and do make the difference between uh, successful adventuring and, and either challenging or, or adventures that fail. And we talked um, it, first edition characters are, you know, we there's this concept of you know zero to hero, which I totally agree with. But a lot of the hero, if, especially if you're the fighter type or you don't progress in spell levels, is the magic items you have. Um, and so adventures that take away magic items or they get prisoners, that's why players hate that uh, A4, which is. Um, uh, the last of the slaver series where the, the slavers have captured the party and they start with nothing you know these super powerful adventurers now they have they're fighting with uh, blackjacks and saps that they've made it's it sounds great for the dm but i've never seen a uh, back a player that i've played with and been like 
oh great, I don't, I don't get to use my plus three sword and plate mail and shield, I get to play with the blackjack. I'm super excited about the, the challenges there. Yeah, remember, I think it was in Morkandane Manor, which I ran for you guys, uh, a Janelle J. Clay's adventure, where you run into, I don't know, it's like 13 evil dwarves or something like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then basically they just started taking, I'm like, I tried to play it as I thought they would do it. And basically, I think at one point, one of your players said, oh, so this is a shakedown? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> Give us all your stuff. And then you guys got out of it with a sleep spell. But. So player characters despise losing magic items. And... I'm going to say that what I understand of how the game is set up, or at least rules is written, is magic Magic should be common as far as acquiring it. Um, but it, again, it comes from an ancient world. Um, and while you can create your own magic items, it is very difficult to do. And it is not difficult to lose magic items. That it is very simple for it to... Uh, for it to be destroyed. And um, just checking the live stream. We're, we're live streaming it. Good. Sorry about that. So, um, and that's a tension because, again, players want to keep their magic items. So, uh, rules is written. Um, you know, give out magic items in page, if you're a dungeon master on page 92, it talks about placement of magic items. Um, and again, this is in line with. Uh, what Dan was talking about in B2 where Gary and, and the Dungeon Masters guys gives when you're creating uh, dungeons and, and adventures where to place um, money and magic items. So it says just important considering treasure it's the th thoughtless placement of powerful magic items has been the ruination of many a campaign. Mm. Not only does it cheapen what should be rare and precious, it gives player characters undeserved advancement. This is the part, the fault of this writer, who deeply regrets not taking the time and space in D&D to stress repeatedly the importance of moderation. So I think what he was saying is, in the first uh, iteration of Dungeons & Dragons, he, he basically listed all these powerful magic items but gave no guidance on how to give it. And so the idea of the Monty Hall campaign, and it says... Here, not only is such Monty Hall games a crashing bore for most participants, they are a headache for their DM as well, for the rules of the game do not provide anything for such play. So it goes on and it says, you know, you need to find that strike the balance. Now, his balance is uh, pretty tight, you know, when you, when you read at least the instructions that he gave here, because, you know, you may go through an entire level and... Uh, you may find a plus one dagger or maybe a boots of something. So, um, again, there's some discussion on here, but the point of it is that uh, you should be thoughtful in your placement. And that's sometimes the tension of using a uh, pre-purchased or downloaded module. Uh, you, if you're running a campaign, you need to scan. That's the first thing, one of the first things I scan over is what kind of magic items there are. And I tend to be cheap and I tend to... Uh, stingy with them um, and I tend to only try to give out magic items that uh, I know because again if you give out a magic item that's potentially breaks your campaign um, you know the example would be you know if you have a low magic campaign and you know there's a lot of um, well, let's say uh, it's a whole fire base and you give out a frost brand that could definitely change when a frost brand is plus six against fire using dwelling creatures that could change the whole game and so um, recently I've tried to be uh, the other way which is you know what people are playing this game give out cool stuff why not you know in fact I have an artifact floating around which is a different type of magic item because you know we're getting older we, we want to you know these campaigns are unlikely to last five or six years where I have to worry about it you're talking between 10 and 40 sessions for a campaign if you're playing every other week, which is you know a couple of years. Give out some cool stuff. Not at first level, but uh, later on. What's your thoughts on that, Dan? No, I agree. Uh, you know, in my game that I was running with you guys, and actually it's more contained manner again, there was a magic item which was ready to create a big imbalance. Uh, as you may recall, when you guys uh, murdered that old woman, the nice old lady, you murdered her. And you were uh, yes, that's right. that's exact. In fact, I do recall that we were walking around and we saw this 
old woman by a pond or a, no by a fire air. She's cooking supper. Maybe she's making cookies. And then we assaulted her. Right. I think she was right. She was baking cookies on the fire for her grandchildren. Right. Because she had to be there that night right. for either grandchildren. Her, her, son's, her son was uh, away from business. And we Correct. broke into his house. Killed his... Right. And murdered his mother. His, right. Exactly. And murdered his guests. His mother. And killed right. guests. That's right. exactly what I recall. And then he stripped her body. Well, of course. And we, did we set it on fire at some point? I felt probably. like we probably burned that it. That is typically... That's, <laughs> that was the M.O. So I would expect you did. I know he choked her to death. We didn't, yes. We, he choked her to death. It, a slow, painful death. Yeah. You wanted to make sure that she looked into your face as she died. Uh, I think it was the good ranger that killed her, too. Right. I think it was, like, one of the, our, our most good player. Of the players we had, which was pretty morally ambiguous, yeah, I think it was, it was the good player. Yeah, he, right. Yeah, you know the part you talk when it's the good player. It's not one of the. It was the good player. Right. Uh, in quotes and open quotes on good, meaning it was written on the paper. Right. With, good with evil tendencies. <laughs> so after strangling this old woman... Uh, searched her. Who I believe was a practitioner of the dark arts, I'm just saying. Never confirmed. Mm. Never, never confirmed. Mm. And you took her, she had a, uh, a necklace or a brooch or something like that, right? And it turned out that it was, it was a magical item and it, it made the wearer impervious to, I think, uh, edged weapon attacks. Wow. Because you may remember then, right? So I think Marty had it yeah. and nothing was, he was never getting hit. And that's the way it was written, if I recall correctly, in the adventure. And, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to Marty because I talked to him afterwards. And I was like, look, it can't have this much power. And he agreed. And so sometimes you got to do that. If you play the modules written and it turns out, or you just you don't realize that you've given them something that is too powerful, would you agree that the thing perhaps to do is go have a conversation with the player and say, look, yeah, you know, we need to step this back a bit. You know what? I mean, I guess what you could do is, I mean, you could have it be stolen and no. like that, but I think it's yeah. probably better just to fess up that you made a mistake. And right. I mean, ultimately, you don't uh, don't want to have that problem in the first place by right. not giving it out. But if you did do that, there's a number of things you can do. Is it going to be a permanent issue or is it a temporary issue? Right. You know, if, if uh, so on Keeper in the Borderlands, there's a plus two sword, which is, you know, a very... That sword could give, be given to fourth and seventh level characters, and they'd be like, "Oh, that's great." So, is this something that's going to break your game if someone has another five percent improvement? No, I would probably let that go. But if it was something like a fighter who couldn't be hit by any weapon, or in this case, edge weapons, um, and it would change the dynamic so much that you would have to build encounters to challenge that one player at the detriment of the other exactly. players then you should try to have that conversation. Yep. Right. And, and not go out of your way to like, you know, shoot disintegration or fireballs right. at him to try to get rid of it. Because then that's just being a, a, a troll job. So all those factors I would look into before. And it's good, you know, and then you have that player. Uh, I think I've been pretty fortunate with the group we have. Um, I'd created some magic items and, and uh, which again, that's one of the creative things you can do. Um, and it had some abilities, and and I had forgotten the ability that I gave the item, and the character, the player wrote down the ability that he thought it was. I'm like, boy, that's really powerful. I don't remember doing that. I had to go back and, and said, no, that's not how it's mm -hmm. supposed to be, because literally the way he wrote it, and I didn't remember that it would make things, basically it was like a Geiger counter to any quest that they had. That they <laughs> <laughs> figure out exactly where they're going, which is a little more powerful than than the plan was. And so I basically I'd say... There's a misunderstanding. Is what right. Saying. Well, I, yeah. It, it, but you don't want to punish the player. And he no. was fine with it. He's like, whatever it is. And so then I went back and said, well, it's locate object three times a day, which is still a great thing, but it's not you automatically find the quest item you're looking for. Can I, can I do a shout out for uh, a list of magic items, which I think are fun, but I think most players do not. I think it's called Orlo. I just say O-R-L-O-W. I've heard of this. Orlo's Inventions, and Orlo is you know, a magic user, uh, and he was featured in a module by Roll A. It's called uh, Beast Maker Mountain. Okay. And I know in the Dragon Magazine, I think it's, I want to say Bill Fawcett, I think, uh, who wrote Beast Maker Mountain also, and had Orlo there, also did an article in Dragon Magazine where he had a lot of interesting uh, magic items that this guy would come up with, oh, you know, like the eternal salt shaker, <laughs> endless salt, stuff like that. I, I think things like that are fun to sprinkle. Yeah. In your get it sprinkle I, in your adventure. I'm staring 
blindly into the abyss that is the camera. <laughs> so that's a good one. I like the pun. So those are nice. I don't think that you could throw. So I think it's nice that maybe you know if you want to give out some magic items at lower level, I think it's nice maybe to come up with some a little bit more interesting ones that are not so powerful. Right, and um, like we talked about last session, the idea of if you have a high magic world or magic is prevalent and there is an active um, making of it or the history or the area that you, um, you know, the ancient civilization that the current civilization is living off of, uh, there would be these items. If it was a high magic fantasy kingdom that fell apart and now you're living through it, um, there would be the salt shaker of this mm -hmm. and the bugs killer of that. Mm -hmm. You know, mag magic users are people too and they would want to come up with conveniences to get rid of it. It also is fun. I mean, that's the idea of the cantrip, uh, you know, which came out later uh, in one AD and D one point five in the mid late. These zero level useful spells, quote unquote, they didn't really have a whole lot of mechanical. So us power gamers kind of discounted them. But if you were more fun, you would find them entertaining. I found them entertaining. We never used them because I didn't. We didn't play with. That's on Earth Arcana, right? right. Is cantrips. And I, I assume they were in the, one of the drag. I, Pretty much they everything. were. Yeah, I'm that's sure right. Came. I think cantrips. Yeah, cantrips did come out uh, in Dragon Magazine. Did um, can you use cantrips? Were cantrips only for when you were level zero, or would you retain cantrips? Do you know after you were level one? You can right? maintain them as long as you want. It was a four for one. Um, so a oh. first level spell slot could be replaced with four cantrips, if I recall correctly. Because I, I was sold on cantrips, so I could never use them, so I guess I didn't buy. But uh, wasn't the one like B, where you like create a B and he buzzes around here? Yeah. See, that's hilarious. Right, B that's... and chill, and <laughs> oh, well, you know. <laughs> that's just... good stuff. Yeah, so it, this is, I won't show the book that shall not be named, but since he does like, yeah. you could do things like, uh, yeah, warm. This same as chill, except the magic user brings a warming of the solid liquid. The temperature will rise about 40 degrees. There you go. And you know, so 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 that book. So cantrips in that book, I do like cantrips. So you know why? You know what I think my theory behind that is? A broken clock is right twice a day. Yes. Well, that is that's true. You did like that. You did like some of it. And I think I want to say, where was B? There's something. It may have been. B. I can't find B. But you know, um, the idea was that. As a magic user, you're training your, you know, your Mickey Mouse. Uh, you're learning basic uh, the rudiments of magic casting, and you wouldn't start with magic missile or something like that. Which, you know, the problem is some of the first level spells that are first level spells should be cantrip, aka push and right. mend, mending these right. terrible spells yeah. that I mentioned. If anyone has love for mending. Or, or push, please call the Grog time, 407-476-6779. And um, you know, I am keeping an eye on it because we did get our first text on the Grog line. Does that, that, does that count as a call? No, no, it does not. It does not count as a call because the part of the prize, which uh, I did try to reach out to the person, an international uh, communication, is they would have to either have a question or comment and, and submit it. Uh, and that would qualify for being the first person. Just just acknowledging that this is the grog line is not sufficient. For oh, and we forgot to mention too. So I hadn't even thought about having to ship their swag internationally because that, that that's going to be at least like a fifty dollar well shipping charge that they'll have to well, pay. Well, right? and duties and customs and everything else. Oh, and another fifty for that. To well, be I had assumed that we would set up a Bitcoin account and the person would send us a thousand dollar deposit in Bitcoin. Yeah. I like we that would idea. then we would then ship the item, mm -hmm. uh, figure out the true cost, and then credit them back the, the balance. Of right, because we want to make sure this is fair, and and if they're committed to getting Dragon Seventy Eight as an example, which is falling apart, <laughs> the falling apart Dragon Seventy Eight. It may not arrive with the cover. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the cover may be disintegrated by the time you get there. Well, well, you know, or uh, yeah, well, we've got other ones, or we've got this uh, a well used monster manual. Look, that is original. If you want books that look better, play fifth edition, right? All right yeah, go know? get a new book then, right? Go, go play fifth, take your PDF and get it printed out. But if you want something that says someone played this a lot, if, yeah, if you if you want a book that says I did not pay any attention in junior high and high school, right? Exactly. <laughs> barely thing, graduated. This thing is all jacked. I had a 140 IQ, but I barely graduated, kind of kid, right? But I would be happy to. Uh, I'd be happy to, 
exactly that. So yes, to, to not to continue to raise the bar, but you you need to be interacting with the during the live stream, either through a text or uh, a phone call. All right, it's like you're chastising our viewers. All right, I, can I? Talk? You use the plural. Can and all right, our viewer. Can I? All right, can I talk about? So this is the one thing that bothers me about swords and daggers, magic swords and daggers. You probably do you know what bothers me about magic swords? They give out light. Exactly. Now, I don't have a problem with that per se. Of course, but, not all of them do, but some of them do. Oh, is that right? Yes. Oh, how do you know that not all of them do? Because uh, some of them do not emit light or they are controllable by light. So, where do, where well, you have to read the individual this? ones. So it's, oh, it's the rule, right, which right. is all magic. It's the items. default rule. You, right. That's right. And then there's individual ones. So, for instance, the Sword of Sharpness, if I remember correctly, uh, is that the one? Yes, the short sharpness responds to the wielder's desire with respect to light it sheds. So it doesn't, it can be none, a five foot circle dim illumination of 15 foot light or a 30 foot radius glow equal to a light spell. Okay, so, so you need to look into, but as a general rule, general unless rule it they, indicates otherwise, right. magic swords and daggers glow when taken out of the scabbard. Yes. So that means that, and, I, and maybe this is a good segue to the identify issue. As a general rule, although, of course, you're not going to know what, ma what the magical properties are of the sword or dagger, typically when you find a sword or dagger, the party member will know whether it's a magical sword or not because it'll glow, right? I mean, you don't need to identify. Right. Um, and so, you know, that, I think that takes a little bit of the fun out of things. And one of the questions we had, I asked you about this, and I think you said yes, is do cursed swords glow? Yes. Yes, I They're agree magic. with that. They're magic. And so that would confuse the, uh, the character to think it's a good thing. So, so just real quick, again, back to the magic is great, but it should be hard to acquire like a lot of things. It, the dungeon master should not make it as easy to figure things out. At least this is rules as written. And they are perishable. They are not permanent items except for artifacts for the most part. They have an opportunity to be destroyed or consumed. And the placement of them should be commensurate to the, the style of play you have and the dungeon. You don't want to give too little where there's no advancement, but not too much. Um, and again, depending on, and that's really a judgment call. So go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay, no, 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 that was, uh, I, I just wanted to make that comment about uh, swords and daggers. But so yeah, maybe we can talk now about identify because that's, I think that's the next big, the next big issue after selection and placement of magic items is how the dungeon master is going to deal with letting the party know what they have. Yeah, well let's, you know what I was gonna do, thinking of, I was gonna, let's role play that we're playing Dungeons and Dragons Rules as Written. So you're gonna be the player and I'm gonna be the character. I'm gonna say, and you know we're playing Dungeons and Dragons because I'm pulling out the official yes. dungeon master screen. So I'm gonna pretend uh, Rules as Written um, and you're going to be the character. And you're going to try to get. So, you've defeated the dragon. You open the chest, and there is the tr the, the great treasure of of Ziglock, the black dragon. Oh, no. Okay, no, no. I've adventured with you before. You're not tricking me again. Um, I'm searching for traps to see if there's a scythe. Oh, Am I pronouncing okay. that right? I was going to say that's right. Scythe or Sith? Yeah. I yeah. think it's Scythe, right? I like to so search you, for trap. Well, right? you can't. That's not for you to do, sir. That's for me to roll. You can't. You wouldn't know. Mm. Uh, I so, don't trust you. Um, even no, though, even this. though you're a fighter in this case, you did search for traps, <laughs> and you were you did not find any. Obviously, the dragon, ah. in his arrogance, thought he did not need a trap. He Great. never thought he would be felled. But this treasure, and there's gold and gems, and there's a couple of items that uh, that are not treasure that are in front. Are there any swords or daggers? Uh, are, are you going to start rifling through the stuff? Yes. Okay. Well, then I have to roll dice. Oh, come on. Okay. You know, we're, we're, we're supposed to just be, you know, teaching about magic items, and I think you're out to kill me. Well, I'm just rolling dice. That's no, You I, can't help it. You I, get behind that screen. You have to roll dice. you got to roll dice and kill me. <laughs> exactly. No, fortunately, nothing happens, and you start... Well, I, you, how are you rooting through the chest? You're such, a D, you're such a DM. Yes. Well, you can't just be like you find this and this. You well, we're doing know? rules as written here. We're not doing the... Uh, we're going to do option two, which is what players want. This is how the DM and Gary Gygax wants it. So, <laughs> how are you rooting through the chest? Um, Please describe to me. Oh, well, I take out that. But you're the caller, I assume. <laughs> if not, we got a problem. 
<laughs> it's going to be a quiet session. <laughs> Someone call. Will the caller please call the grog line? That's right. <laughs> we need a caller. I'm sorry, I can't speak to you. I can only speak to the caller. You're right. And I can't talk. And if you're going to do it real guy gags, don't you need to go behind there I'm, somewhere? I'm not going to be in the closet so, over there. So basically, I'll just be sitting here quiet, and we'll hear you off there. Be going, you know. I'll just open there once in a while. Anyone? You're dead. You're dead. Anyone? <laughs> Bueller? Anyone? Okay. So well. I'm taking that, don't, it's on my character sheet. Mm -hmm. It's right there. Mm -hmm. Thy 10 foot pole. Ah. Of course. And I'm taking that 10 foot pole. And you're stirring the treasure. Uh, so to speak, yes. Okay, so as you go through, you Stir, hit. I'm stirring, I'm literally stirring the pot. You are stirring the pot. You, and between the platinum and electrum and copper pieces and gems, what, beyond your imagination, yes. which your imagination yeah. is vast as a fighter seeking treasure, yeah. you, you hit something that is, seems to be immovable. Okay, um, so and what I'll... And it feels midway into the treasure chest. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Well, I have a shield, right? I'm a fighter. Yes. I'm going to take my shield. This is the way you got to do it. This is why people probably don't like 1E. This is what oh. you have to do. Instead of just like, here's your treasure... Well, we're going to go do that. It's we're like gonna... an hour of me, like I'm going to take my shield right. and slowly scoop that's away right. We're going to do the... that. We're going to show the way the players want. But this is the way... For... That's right. Go I'm taking my shield, mm -hmm. and I'm going to use it to scoop away... I just have to roll random know, monsters because yeah. right. you are taking a while to right. figure this Giant out. Giant wasp. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I'm taking a while, but then when I don't take a while, I'm killed by a scythe. Okay, yeah. Oh, this right. is what we. This is the game we <laughs> play, right? That's why we play. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Are there any giant, did a giant wasp come no. by? Do I hear anything buzzing? No, no hear no buzzing. <laughs> did I tell you it was a giant wasp? I don't remember that. Last time, didn't you? Yeah, I think I may have. I'm sorry. Well, I heard the buzz. I think it they like flew buzzing. by. Or or it could have been the flies in your in your helmet. Okay. But yes, it was 15 <laughs> giant wasps that you were about to be attacked by. So okay. it was smart that you ran. Okay, so I'm gonna scoop. All right, so I scoop it all. So on. after a couple of minutes of carefully, because you're not sure what this item is, and I assume your character actually make a dex check to make sure you don't uh, uh, fall into the treasure well that in in the thing you don't damage something else that's in there oh okay i have to the item has to make a saving throw no it's just just i want to see how well you're All able right. to scoop a die 20 out. i assume yeah sure yeah because that's your standard dex check, right right would be a die yeah. 20 any ability 15 oh thank god i have an 18 dex. i think you have a pretty high deck it's so, 18 so fortunately as you're digging you actually also find a uh a, a glass or crystal vial as oh. you're doing through it and you also identify what appears to be a scabbard, as okay. it's protruding out of the out of the treasure. Eventually. Okay, I, I will. Am I able to pull? So does it look like a dagger, Are you scabbard, or a sword? It uh, looks like a sword. Um, so all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this sword. Now, out. What kind of sword do you use now? I use a, a long sword. Okay, so we're gonna roll percentages to find out what kind of sword it is, because of course he would want a long sword, but we don't really know that. And there is actually right. There, isn't there a chart? There is a chart that has. There. Is that in the DMG right. where it's percentage chance? In, in the sword chance, it says 70% are long swords. So congratulations, that one is a okay. long sword. Great. Is uh, it glowing? Uh, it is not glowing at this point because it's in its scabbard. Oh, okay. You I pulled it out of the scabbard. Oh, well, then it illuminates. But now you've, well, you've pulled it out. Uh, what is your alignment? My alignment is, uh, well, you know, see, this is, you know, why we don't have to make up a character. You know who this is? Okay. This is, uh, this is, uh, is it trick? No, no, not pick. This is glade. 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 Okay, great. Glade so, leaf trotter. So what the so the issue with swords, just to give okay, you an example, good. your chaotic good. So this sword most likely is not intelligent, but if it was intelligent, it may have an alignment, and if it has an alignment, and it's not the same or or compatible with that, it may shock glades and kill it, it kill the creature, the character instantly. Which creature? Be, excuse me. Well, it's glade. She would be killed horribly, which we would hate to have. So. We first have to roll to see if it's intense. Here, I'll make you roll for dice. Roll percentages. I think Glade should be put out of Glade's mis misery. No, she's... 14. Okay, so the good news, this is a stupid sword. But it does glow. Okay. And roll percentages again, because I don't know what kind of weapon it is. Let's kind of figure out what it is. 33. 33. So they're random. So what you're looking at now it's, is the DMG, the Dungeon that's right. Master's Guide. That's they're, right. How many... Why... Let me ask you this. Why would you use the random... If you were actually running a game, I assume as the DM, you, we just talked about how Gygax said that you should be careful about the placement of magic items, what you select. So you typically would not roll for magic items. Is that, I mean, you might for treasure, mm -hmm. right? I mean, each monster has a treasure type that you can roll it up. Right. 
but generally, other for for swords, you would pick it as the DM, right? It's what you think it should be. Um, I do it both ways. I I like the idea of random because again, it forces you to to try things that you because the default is going to be a plus one sword. Mm -hmm. That's just how people think about it. Mm -hmm. So by doing random, you may go, oh, that's interesting. And then it also allows for creativity, kind of like what you talked about. Randomness is is the juice of the part of the fun of the game is because it causes mm -hmm. uh, different things. So the sword that you roll, would you roll thirty three? Yes. Okay. So thirty three, I may now have a a hook about this I campaign, agree, yeah. which I wouldn't have done if I just said, "Well, your first level, you get a plus one sword." I agree completely with that. So I mean, I love randomness, particularly from the DM side of it, because. The DM a lot of times doesn't get to get involved too much with the randomness of it, but right. this would allow you to. So, but I assume what you do is you, would, of course, would exercise a veto power over right. a role. So, if it's a Holy Avenger, right, and it's a low level, okay. Well, or now again, if that's the case, like for instance, um, you know, if you give out a super powerful weapon, then there's consequences. So it should be never know. But again, if you don't want to have to deal with that, and you don't want to be a troll where. You give someone a super powerful weapon and then it gets taken away. Then mm -hmm. uh, because you know, you find the artifact of Lun the Mad, whatever, and now you know the fourteenth level wizard shows up. Oh, thanks for finding that and taking it from you. You should you know d use discretion. I wonder if we should rename our show, our podcast here, mm -hmm. uh, the Two Headed Troll. The Two Headed Troll. I like. We that. should think about that. Lisa. Are you writing that down? <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. I love it. You know, because Grog is so every everything's Grog. Grog this. Grog that. You know. Yeah. yeah. Two Headed Troll. I don't know. Just I, an idea. I I, I I think it's great. <laughs> That's why I'm writing it down. <laughs> There's 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 no there's nothing like making sure you get or brand, the or huh? the Etten. We could be the Etten. The Etten. There's nothing there's nothing like making sure you get brand recognition by continually changing the title. Right. Have you liked our thing? Well, now we're you'll changing. find it. <laughs> That's changed. Marketing so. is not our thing. Okay, so you've, you've found yes. a, a, a clear uh, crystal vial oh, and a scab, a long sword in a scabbard. Okay, is there, do I notice if there's any liquid in yes, the vial? Yes, there is liquid. What do, what, now this is, okay, so something I've noticed when I'm the DM is that whenever there's a lit, and I shouldn't say whenever, often when there is a liquid in a vial, Player characters want to know, well, what does it look like? What does it smell like? Now, the DMG, if I recall correctly, does not identify for different types of potions. Correct. Different colors, That's anything exactly like right. that. So usually, is this, is this true for you too? I, I'd like to know, do you in advance identify, almost like NPC names. Hey, what's, what's the name of that guard? And you're fumbling around. Right. And people tell you you should have a list of like five names off, so you can just go to the name. Do you identify the color of the liquid? No. No. So you just sort of wing it. That's yellow. Right. It's whatever. Okay. Well, it's because I go from, now again, we'll do the player one in just a second, but this is, this is the DM version, which says, potion containers can either be described at your option. They should, you know, ceramic, crystal glass, metal flask, in enough quantity to provide one person a complete dose. Uh, as a general rule, they should bear no identifying marks, so that the players must sample from each container in order to determine the nature of the liquid. And I'm going to right because it's interesting. Players always want to; they always seem to ask that, and so. But I don't know what information they're getting out of that. I mean, I even had one recently, as you may recall, where the adventure said it smells rancid, right? And the player drank it, and it was poison, if right. I recall correctly. But mm -hmm. other than it being rancid, I don't know what that's going to do for you. But so I'm going to add, did I ask, what, is, what, what does it look like? Uh, you know, now I understand me on this side of the screen why you'd ask that. It's a fair question. I want to know if it's like green and bubbling. Well, and it says typically poison potions are odorless and, and of any color. So you can make them whatever color you want. So I would be like, yeah, uh, yeah actually it's, it's, a, it's a clear crystal, but it's a, um, it's a mauve color, slightly translucent. Do I notice any like little tiny, really really tiny carp swimming in it? Uh, no, <laughs> no diminutive carps are found no in there. I, I, okay, I darn. Apologize. Um, no miniature carps. We'll talk about that soon, I'm sure. Okay, so um, so bottom line is when the players ask, what so, is so so you pulled the sword out yeah. and it glue it it, 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 glued, it glued it glued it glued <laughs> it, it glued. started to glow uh, <laughs> approximately what, fifteen or twenty feet, whatever the player's handbook says. You know, right. A nice, you know, okay. warm, 
uh, glow around it. That's it. So, so you remember, you can use these as a light source um, when you adventure. Oh, let me ask you this, because this comes up too. Mm -hmm. Is there are actually some players out there, some groups, who play, I don't agree with this, but they play where you can turn on and off the light source right. on a sword. I, and I say no. I agree with you. It never says it anywhere. It says when it's pulled, and I know, I, don't, I didn't give a cite for this. I should have. But I've written here. By the way, we're doing rods, stabs, and wands here, not swords, but is that's okay. It, is that what it says? Yes. <laughs> it's, no, we said. False advertising. We said we're going to do that, but it's okay. Go ahead. Well, you know, how much is there to talk about rods, stabs, and wands? So, oh, um, my goodness. It says oh, it, people are turning off just because you insulted them with that. I insulted okay. the magic users. It says that it glows when it's taken on the scabbard. It doesn't say right. it glows when you say glow. Mm -hmm. So it always glows. And because of what is that the, the uh, I'm sure there is a an official term either in logic or law or something to, if there's an example that proves that it's an exception, then then the rule is is verified. Meaning, again, Correct. the sword of sharpness will respond to the wielder's desire with respect to light it sheds. None of five foot. So this one sword allows you to change the illumination. How do you change the illumination by doing what? The sword of sharpness will respond to the wielder's desire with respect oh, to the yeah. light it sheds. None, Agreed. a five foot, fifteen foot, or thirty foot, and th equal to a light spell. So this sword uh -huh. allows you to change it. This would be great. So let's say we're playing. So at I, a I don't know what the argument, how, what kind of convention is, but I'm sure there's some argument that this exception proves the rule. That I agree with that. So let's say we're playing at a convention. This is awesome. Let's say we're playing at a convention now. And you go ahead and tell me that you want to try to turn off the light on your sword. Yeah, I'm invisible. Here's the other part, because I rule if you're invisible and you have your sword out, the light still projects out of you. Oh, that's interesting. That's another interesting issue. Right. Oh, wow. All right, so we're at a convention. So I'm a, and I cast, I have my ring of invisibility and I have my little sting sword out. Uh, and it's and it's right. short sword. Okay, and I'm walking through. And you want to tell me you want to tell you say tell me that you want to turn off the light on your sword. Well, you tell me there's orcs. Oh, I want to turn my light off. Now. What do you think? This is a sword of sharpness. There you go. Wow. I got that. That's that's the line. When do I get the survey of what kind of DM you are? <laughs> did, did you eva evaluate the DM? Yes, play? exactly. Right. Yeah. Sucks. Evals. <laughs> no, no. I no. I have I have convention DM tenure. That's actually not true. I don't. Really? Okay. I do not have tenure. How, how do you? I'm a junior. I'm, I'm, I'm a junior at this point. Yeah. I'm an adjunct. Yes, exactly right. I, I've done one class. You've done one class. That's and true. And the evals weren't that great. Okay. So I. Okay. So now I've got this. What I think is a potion. I am going to. And this is. This is how you do it. Now this right. could cause you some real issues. You could die. But if it's poison. But in the in, in first edition, you can sample. And if I recall correctly, by sampling it, I will get the player character will typically get some sense. You would describe mm -hmm. how I feel, right? It'll be right. a minor effect of it. And you're not going to be like, oh, it's a heroism potion, but you feel, I don't know, might, whatever. Right. So I'm going to take a little sip of... You're going to take a little sip you know, of the clear little, purple, uh, the slightly purple potion. Yeah, does, does a little bit of poison have the same... Is it... How do you deal with a little bit of poison? It's the same as a whole lot of poison. Gotcha. It's a saving throw. So, which by but the, the way, good thing is it's not monster poison right. necessarily. It could be monster, right? Which is not uh, necessarily deadly. Well, right? you'd have to look up poison then. And it says uh, ingestion, introduction through breaking the skin or possibly just skin will cause death. Poison can be weak or deadly. Right. So that's what you have to decide. Because monster poison, right? Because there's different types, right? If you look right. at the beginning, right? I think early in the DMG, there's poison I would say types. if you took a, a small uh, amount, a.k.a. a sip, yeah. you would, I would give it a weak poison regardless yeah. of what it is. Now I'm like a cat, just like the tongue. Right. Well, so. you've, you've done that. Now roll d20. Okay. What'd you roll? A three. Three. Oh, this is very interesting. So uh, who did this? Glade? Yeah, this, this is actually, this is a uh, spinoff. This is Glade just alone. This, this, oh, well, that, no, you want Pixie there, too. Well, then why didn't Pixie check for the... Tr okay, whatever. Okay, okay, Glade, yes. Glade so, and Pixie. Uh, so Pixie's... Uh, Glade takes a small... Puts her finger in yeah. and senses that she can manipulate uh, Pixie to do her will. Oh, Glade likes this. That's right. Okay, all right. So that's... And felt like... Um, 
That's what you could do. Oh, that's a grog line? <laughs> so hold on. Oh, no. I'm uh, supposed to get out. Hello, a grog. A no, no, it's over here. Hello. No, change. You're confused. No, this, Stop. Hello. No. This is the grog. Oh, no, it's you're breaking up. I can't. <laughs> oh, we lost them. <sighs> oh, man. Sorry. Oh. So, yeah, so just for FYI, I rolled human control and I rolled, you rolled the three, which is for elves and half elves. Oh. There's a potion of, of human control. That's correct. And you rolled three, elves or half elves. So if you had rolled humans, you would be like, mm, I have no, I, I feel like I could suggest something to someone. That's what I'd have to adjudicate or some other randomness, but because Pixie was there. Okay. You so this is interesting. Water. So I drink this potion and I control others. You think yes. that if they drank it, I could No, it okay. allows the imbiber to control up to 32 levels of humans as a charm person spell had been cast. But of course, you wouldn't tell me this in the real game. You, all you would have told me is exactly what you said, right. which is I feel like I can... Right, so you would know it's just elves. You, you'd be like, oh, I have a way to charm people, and you'd probably use it on an ogre, and it'd be like, so the bottom, attack you. So the bottom line So we haven't done with the sword, too. Well, the bottom line is so... In the, and by the way, you hold the sword, and you, it's definitely magical because you've picked it up, uh, and it's glowed on its own, but you have no other idea of what it is. And so that's what Rules is Written is. Okay. So, um, all right, do I find any... Uh, and you don't know what, what bonuses or anything else. You just know you have a, a new weapon. That would be it. Are there right. any... Right. Well, I'm not going to go through the whole role play. I'm going to ask if there's runes on that. Yeah, no, there... no runes. They're just standard okay. things. Yeah. Now, you could... Some, uh, some magic items talk about there could be uh, documents that you find in the treasure, in the mm -hmm. dungeon, that kind of give you some idea. Maybe uh, when we talk about rod, staffs, and wands or command words that are necessary, which is always a terrible thing because if you don't know them, you have a stick. People forget about that. Right. That's right. What do you call what do you call a wand without the command word? Stick. That's right. What do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A stick. There you go. See, right. We'll be here all week. Uh, I love it. Do I find any long, slender sticks? Items. Sticks. <laughs> Are there any sticks? No, you don't find any sticks. In this fact, is all about rods, tabs, and wands. How could you not put a? Oh yes. Well, actually, no. What you do? It should find, be like a, a bag of them. No. What you do find, however, a is box. as you well, you were in such zeal of tea, you stopped searching. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to drink. And it. I shouldn't have said anything. I should have just said no. You don't find anything. And then we left and said, well, you, how much treasure is it? Whatever you had dug out of there, you left the rest of it there. I'm that's what true first edition would have been like. Well, I'm drinking the potion. Okay. And then I'm telling Pixie to dive in. Uh, make a tw make a saving throw for Pixie. Nope. Seven. He's he is charmed by. I tell Pixie to dive in there and just look for rod stabs and wands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see like Pixie's feet. Is yeah. Like so she just, yeah. She, he, he dives. He dives in. <laughs> And that was a good use of that potion. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's amazing that, that Pixie and uh, Glade don't do better in their adventures. Right. Well, the good news is this is a permanent charm. I it's mean, all about choices. F, what? It's charm person. It, it gets permanent unless it eventually makes a save. Oh, this is the stuff with like, the, like so many months or something, right. and then you get yeah. another one and on, all this? Uh, t well, fortunately for Pixie, oh. his intelligence is pretty high, so I think he gets to check every few days. Oh, this is great. All right, so this is part of the adventure. So you find, uh, uh, well, Pixie finds, uh, digging in, that finds a, a what appears to be um, a, a stick that's iron-bound in certain areas, about three foot long and as thick as his thumb. Okay, great. All right. So, um, so uh, DM, what is that? What is it? That like, what is it? Like, what, what kind of... Uh, is, is it what I recognize is a wand? I don't know what a rod is. What is That's the difference right. between a rod and a so wand? So a staff is big. A is that, rod, like, think Gandalf. A, yeah, right? a rod is more like a crowbar kind of size, a large crowbar. It's three feet long. So it's that size of it. Could be. Where do they? Do these? Where did that come from? I understand well, a like wand. The, like the septum, words? you know, like the you know the king ruler. You know, you have oh. the, the scepter. It's a similar size. You know? Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean, it's more like a scepter. I see that. Right, but this was in this case, it's just a. It stick looks, with that's bound with metal. It looks wand like. It we're looks rod like. We're not idiots. Oh, it's rod. It's that long. It's yeah, three is foot it, long. Oh, right? it's wand so would be a stick. Now I have to figure out what kind it is that you got. Yeah, tell me what it is. So DM, will you tell me what? It, are you going to tell me how does this work? Do you tell me then no, what it is? No. Oh. I'm going to roll this because the table has rod stabs and wands on it. Okay, cool. You know what the plural staff is? Staves. <laughs> Why is it staffs? I don't know. 
English is a terrible language. It is ours, but it is mixed. Because it's, it's elves. Or is everything in D&D? Is it just D&D? Everything is V. Elves, dwarves, dwarves staves. staves. That's, that's all I know. S slave. No, slave and slave. Sorry. No, no, Slabs. Should, in order to get the swag, mm -hmm. the first person calls, you will have to also be able to identify an, another one, another V E S. Okay. So, so far, the... <laughs> It's just growing. It's just no wonder no one's calling. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So how would I... So I have this item here. It doesn't glow, of course, unlike swords and daggers. So how would I go about ident determining what this is? So I've got... I could, I could use it, right? So what I have written down here is from Dragon, number 36, Sage Advice. Right. I always like a good sight. To determine if an item is magic, it will ordinarily be necessary to cast a detect magic spell on it or pick it up and try it out. Oh, now this is just to know if it's magic. So the right. first thing to do is what players often do is they'll have a detect magic spell. Yes. And that is what? That's a magic user. Is that also a cleric? Cleric or, or magic user. Okay. And they will usually pile all the uh, all the stuff, right. right? And then will they slowly? Because how long typically? Do you remember how long detect magic typically? It lasts last? for a few rounds at a minimum. So they start separating items out, right? right? They try to uh, quarantine or segregate items. So all right. So um, let's say. So if I had, uh, yeah, there it is. We have our. There's nothing on this. Oh, it's blank. Sorry. What am I looking at? We have a winner. We have a winner. We have a comment. Your family's beautiful, James. No, thank oh. you. Yes. What oh, is? Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. Fourth level magic user using push can stop most. Whoa! This is. You need to like. It goes too quick. If, if uh, cancels out to it. Most fighters from. That's. That's a really good point. Aimed at the sword, so uh, a a a texture. It wouldn't be a call. It's a texture, right? right? Tells us that a fourth level magic user using push can stop most fighters from attacking for a round. Aimed at the sword, the attacker receives minus one per magic user level on the to hit. Now, where does that come from? Is that in, written in the push yeah, spell? Yes, a push spell employed against an object held by a creature will cause it to extract the force of spell in foot pounds from a chance to hit an opponent as applicable if the player makes a save. Well, it's, that is very true. Uh, what page number person, is that? Uh, well, you know, I just closed that. So, and now we're just, we're totally derivative. We know this person must be international because no one in the States is watching this at this hour. No, that's true. But, uh, but that's, they're, they're still waiting. Because you out. want this to last a while, right? If it's only, if it's, if it's too short, that's no good, right? Because who cares about, right? Uh, it's instantaneous. One. So it happens. Oh, but how long are you? Oh. Well, it would prevent what the what the, our texture is saying. Which, by the way, you are the prize winner. Thank you, uh, person. Uh, and if you give us your address at info at uh, grogcon.com, we will send you a a prize out of the collection. So thank you very much. Who the mystery person is? Unfortunately, uh, Google Voice does not allow me to respond back to you directly uh, to international calls. So, um, so I apologize. So we'll, we'll if you, uh, we are Twitter at Grog Talk, so if you use Twitter, or if you send us info at GrogCon, uh, we, will, we would be happy. Dan and I will go through our curated thing and send you something. So thank you, whoever you are. We really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, this is a good one. And you can cause the, uh, you can cause a creature to lose their balance. Do you see that? An yes. example of the latter use is causing a creature attacking to lose its balance when it is attacking. Right. For the creature fails its saving throw, it will not be able to attack that round. Right. So would that be better to cast it on? So if someone's coming at you, well, you don't our, our, need our to fine do viewer it did pr provide a usefulness of push, but in relation to sleep. What would I rather do? I could sleep 16 kobolds for 20 rounds. Or assuming this creature is less than... Now, if this creature was a you know, 7th level fighter, then yes, this would be a much better spell to use than uh, sleep. But of course, when you're going into the dungeon uh, and you had choice of what spells you're going to learn, you're, you're not going to learn push. Now, what would be fun is... Well, like if I'm it, not going to learn push. You, I know I am. I'll tell you why I'm going to learn push. Because if there's that character that's in the front who's really annoying... Mm -hmm. And they're like looking down the long stairway. Right, you're just gonna push and make them off balance. You do a push. I and like, like that. you know, they'll never know what happened. They'll just think they lost their balance. Even though uh, they'll hear something you saying 
push push through the bush or something. Well, you like know, that. but you could if someone was at a precipice or something like that, the baddie. Uh -huh. I mean, I know <laughs> the situation would have to be right. Right. <laughs> this doesn't happen all the time. Right. But if the baddie happened to be standing over, you know, the precipice. Oh, you know the thing I'll I'll do for our <laughs> fair. Uh, well, that's right. It, it would, and and um, you know that says nothing like party cohesion and causing the. I'm telling fight. you, push could be. I, I'm seeing a lot of fun uses for push offs, but see that I'm, I'm the guy who likes the bee cantrip. Right. <laughs> right, you like the bee cantrip, and you like illusionists. And, <laughs> exactly. And so pushes. Basically, it's a zero sum game here. If you don't like it, I'll probably like it. I I think well, it's. Don't like I think it's actually you know that unique circumstance is useful. It's just the problem is. In relation, maybe if sleep was not part of the first level spells, then that would make more sense. But mm -hmm. when I have choices of spells, I'm going to pick magic missile or sleep. But that's the thing, is yeah, but right, but you may not get it because right. you're playing by the book. You roll, you might roll. If push. I receive push as a first level, I would push myself off the it, cliff. This would be interesting. What is push identified as a miscellaneous spell or offensive? I'm or sure defensive? it's offensive. I'm pretty sure it's an offensive spell. We're, um, oh, do you have any idea where I'm going? So basically, uh, this podcast has turned into a discussion of push. Right. Well, <laughs> Episode 15, push, push. spell. <laughs> well, this is, you know, this is, uh, and I think what I'll, I'm going to do for our kind uh, thing is I'm going to try to figure out how I can set up chat uh, on here so they can, because YouTube has well, chats. I don't know. No, this guy who texted or, mm -hmm. or, or, or woman, you know what the problem with this person is? Mm -hmm. They're a little pushy. They are pushy. But... They're the only game we have in town. So I'll take it. Push is on page 39, and it is an offensive spell. It's a, isn't that interesting? Right. So Gygax envisioned this spell as being... You know what's interesting? So is, is light is an offensive spell. You know what's interesting? It's viewed as offensive, yet the illustration given, the example given, is clearly defensive. Right. Right? I mean, it's, it's defensive. It's, it's, it's causing an attacker to go off balance. It's reducing a chance to hit by the attacker. Yes. It's not viewed as offensive as pushing off the cliff. Right. I love it. All right. Okay. That's great. So back to Pixie and Glades, who's consumed the potion yes. and has charmed their own party member. You've figured you have a weapon that you know is magical only because you've grasped it. Now, if it was cursed, if it was uh, the alignment that didn't match the player, uh, that could have been the end of your player if it was a powerful enough sword. Because when it. we talk about swords, we'll talk about the damage of that. But go ahead. So Okay. So now I And you've now found this... Three metal, three foot long stick. It's it's a, like a broomstick, and it's iron bound. Okay. Whether it's magical or not, you have no idea. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, tell Pixie to to search. We need to search because my understanding is is that for rods, stabs, and wands. And who who knows this? Dan Gormansky. Okay. So your players do not. Your, your characters do I'm not. I'm not As Bob would say. As Bob do. As Bob would say. <sighs> All right. So that's I, are, another. Are we helping people here by this? Is this helpful where we're just showing them how not to play? But okay. That's fine. I guess we could we could instruct them by showing them how terrible I do. <laughs> how terrible. Don't do what Dan does. That's right. <laughs> this is how not to play. But go ahead. Right. This is why you asked me to join in this because you right. know how terrible. I need the worst play. To, the best way to teach the, the listeners and the viewers is to have someone terrible. Well, if that was the case, we could get, and this is no slam on our significant others, but they have zero interest. They would probably be the worst players. No, that's the thing. They'd probably be better. Yeah, you think so? You know, yeah, because no. I think that's they're... a bet that I think we could get them on for one time. We couldn't videotape them; it would have to be audio only. But we, I'm sure, if we do that, and then that would be the that would be the next contest. Would our wives play worse than Dan? That would be it. Well, right. No, I think my wife would be a very good player, actually. Okay. So, because she listens, which right. I don't, mm -hmm. and she's, uh, you know, and she's very smart. Okay. So. Um, I, I look, do we find anything else? Um, well, besides the thousands there, of coins uh, and gems, these are, appear to be, again, uh, a potion which you've quaffed, and now you have a, a dear friend in Pixie who's, who's in, it's, it's, he's, he's a friend in more ways than one now. And right. then, um, he's a friend in any way I want him that's, to be. Exactly. That's right. He's your best friend. Is there any writing on this? On this, uh, uh, this, what is this, not what I, what is not a, not a magical, not a, not rod. a rod. That's right. Well, uh, I they can be unusual or appear to be ordinary. I'm going to say it's ordinary. It looks like an ordinary. So there's stick. no writing on it. Nope. 
uh, okay, so um, are there any um, is there any pieces of paper? Um, I'm gonna I'm going to I know I'm telling you multiple actions. I'm gonna I want to search oh, the room. Good. That's good. Yeah, search the room now. So I want to search the search room, the room. looking for like a drawer with a no, a no note, random encounters, a notepad, so. any post its in the drawer. So you, uh, uh, Scragog, I think the black dragon was known for penning tales of, on paper. That's, oh, okay. No, he no. was not. Oh, he's a black that, dragon. Seriously. No, he didn't have, so, uh, you unfortunately do not find any, you find this treasure. I don't find any, wor any like, magic words. No, but what you do find, uh, as you search the lair, you do find what appears to be the um, uh, very clean remains of a, uh, what appears to be a human, uh, in, oh. in, and whose armor has fused with the, his body, what was left oh. of, his, of his armor. He didn't do so well against the dragon. It sounds Apparently, like. yes. Okay. And it appeared to it may have probably been based on had a holy symbol of um, Fentius, the lawful deity of light and justice. Oh, excellent. Okay, I'm going to search that body as best okay. I can. Try to like you know, I assume flesh is like yeah. pulling along. Well, the, the flesh armor. has been long gone, but the but the oh, but yeah. the armor itself, parts of it have fused right. onto the bone. Kind of like it? yeah, I don't know if you're watching Northern Exposure, where the guy was hit by a satellite and he was fused, and they had the yeah. funeral and the satellite no, was coming see. out of the. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. no, I didn't see, but yes, that yeah. similar thing. <laughs> um, apparently, it was. Uh, uh, not not a good encounter with 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 uh, Scragus the. Uh, well, it sounds like it was fast. Uh, it looked that way. So, um, but yes, you don't find anything on him except that you find uh, a small journal in there that was in the backpack. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to take that and we're getting out of there. I'm, okay. I'm putting all the treasure in our bag of holding, and our and our port three portable holes, and we're leaving. Okay, great. So that would be. And, and at that point, uh, the adventure would be over, and then uh, there would be a bunch of things that uh, Dan's party would have to do to try to determine what these items are. Uh, and we'll go over that in a second. Now, now let's play the way the players would like to play it. You have defeated Shragan, the Black Dragon. You have seen his treasure chest. And, oh, by the way, you haven't looked yet, but there's a dead corpse that was killed by the dragon over there. And he has stuff on him. What oh, do you do? Oh, we're going to loot that body. Okay, well, you find a... You find a uh, a in his backpack, the only thing remains is a journal, and it tells you all about his tales and why, what, and and his, and he was looking to destroy um, uh, the sword with this rod that he brought. Okay, I'm going to take some dragon scales with me. Can okay. I break off some black dragon scales? Oh, sure. Scales? Yeah. Well, cut the head off because that's my players. They always try to cut the dragon's head off. Oh. And because they have a portable hole, which you're you're. Your game gave, which has been exciting. So. Right. Okay. But uh, yes. Okay. So yeah. So we're heading back to town. Well, and the, you you open the chest. Oh yeah. This is this is the second part. The first uh, part was rules is written. Now we're playing the way the players want to play. So you, there's a chest full of gems and stuff. In fact, there's thirteen thousand gold, two hundred seventy eight. You just open the chest. I'm going to tell you exactly what's in there. Uh, there's a sword. It's a long sword. Uh, does anyone pick it up? Uh, yes. Ah, oh, good. It's a plus one sword, plus uh, three against. Uh, lycanthropes and shape shifting and you find a potion and it's a purple potion and you look through your book of identifying potions and it's a potion of human control oh vibes. I get you now so this is the way the players this That's is the right. way we would want it to be right That's right. right. this is how the players expect oh right I'm writing all this down right yeah right. it's a purple potion and so you look up and you found purple potion or it first. says it on there right it says human control elves yeah. right. elf control excellent right. excellent and right. then we move on so that's what the players want right and but that's not speak, how it works. Sure to speed things along. Well, and so the, and in some ways we do acquiesce to that. The middle ground can be something in between because if and we're going to talk about how you can now, if we're playing rules as written, all the things you have to do in order to uh, figure it out. Well, because here, this is what's happened, is you've been playing for five hours. Yep. It's eleven o'clock at night. That's right. You found all this treasure, people want to go home, and you like to kind of on the way home know what you found. It's not, you know, so it's kind of uh, a, a, a wet wash rag thrown out the end of the game. If you say, oh yeah, congratulations, that's awesome, we killed the dragon, it was this heroic battle, you find this huge treasure. Yep. All right, well, we'll start in, in two weeks, you guys can go into town, 
Try to identify. What do we have? I don't know. You know. We got a. What well, do, you, what do you, have? you have a stick, a large right. broomstick, uh, a liquid potion, and a sword. Which, if you pulled out, you now you know it's glowing. But the DM wants to. For those of you that don't know what James is talking about, is there is a spell. It's a magic user spell. Right. Called identify. Identify, and it sounds wonderful. And you know, clearly, it's a first level spell. So the conjurer, excuse me, they go to see Bob the conjurer, and they dutifully hand over the items. So we're going to do it the way the players think identify should work. So you bring the, you, you go find Bob the conjurer. Okay. So, uh, well, how much would it cost for you? Uh, it's to, 100 uh, gold pieces. 100 gold pieces? Yeah. Okay, let's get some of this treasure. That's, I try, well, I try to haggle. Uh, what's your charisma? Well, my charisma appears to be a nine. Is that good? Well, no, that's not that good. That's in Pixie in there. Uh, yeah, you know what? For you, it's uh, 100 gold pieces. Okay. All right. So I'll pay the 100 gold pieces. So right. what is it? So, uh, I mean, I so, get my pencil out? so yeah, what so now it? you learn it's a plus one sword with plus three against shape changers and lycanthropes. Oh, very nice. And you learn the rod is a rod of cancellation. Now, you wouldn't have to... Now, how would if you were playing it by the book? Well, this is not by the book. This is, is the way the players want it to happen. Though this is sort of in between. No, so, this is not in between. This well, is at blue. least you're well, at least you're requiring an identify spell. Meaning it's it's above what you know the the first version you did is you just right. tell the players right off the bat. So at least here you are requiring the players to use sure. the identify spell. So it's bet on the continuum. Right. It's closer to the by the book. Right. Uh, side. Um, okay, so, and, and, and the reality is, a lot of times that's nice because if you do not tell the players what it is, then you, the DM, have to keep track of what everything is. You've got to modify all the die rolls. And that's, that's what the issue is. So, right. we're, I'm going to briefly read, so that's how ch the players expect it to work. And that's how I think most people, if they just saw Identify, they'd be like, oh, it's a spell that identifies right. magic items. Right. And if there's a cost, so be it, you know, in this case. Um, well, let's not forget what the poor magic user had right. to drink a pearl or something. Right, well, here's, but well, here's, here's how it really works. And I don't think, I mean, I don't think we ever read it when we were young. We just said identify, sure. Oh, you know, yeah, you were ahead of the game if you were just requiring the use of an identify right. spell. And, and we knew it probably cost something. It's what, you know, look. It is long. It's almost half a page yeah. uh, on one side. Yeah, Dan side. is showing it on the thing. Compared to everything else, I, it, it, it's, it's a tone, right? It's really long. And so... And again, you could argue, well... Um, now, again, so it says here, when identifies cast, one item, one item may be handled. And so the first problem, I would say, is how quickly did you find this item? How long did it take you to get back to town? That's issue number one, because the longer you possess, and it doesn't say hold. Right, possess. Possess. So I think sticking into your backpack, you're still someone's got to possess that thing. It says the item to be identified must be examined by the magic user within one hour of level experience of the examiner after it's been discovered, or all readable impressions have been blended into those the characters possessed it since. So the reality is, I don't know why I'd say reality, but... The reality is... The reality of this fantasy game the is... Rea the reality of this fantasy game is that if you are in a dungeon finding magic items and the DM is keeping track of time, mm -hmm. which is a pain, you probably you're not going to be able to use the Identify spell, right? right. I mean, This is almost like uh, an organ transplant that you have to race yes, back. That's right. Can you put it? Yeah, can you put the magic item in ice? Do you think? Right. Well, that maybe there's some spell that allows you to, you know, not and touch it. You know, in fact, once you look at it, and actually, you're not supposed to touch it. If you don't touch it, you'd have to go get Bob the Conjurer to come out there. Yes. No one touch it. Don't. No one possess it. Right. Do not possess it. Leave it on the ground. Don't even be in the car with it. Because my right. understanding is that counts as possession. I think so. Like it's if it's in your tense. trunk. That's right. Well, that's it's, possession. It's, and I think the that's I think what the I've, Supreme I've Court just, has read that. I've heard that. Yes. I don't know that. I just. Heard I've that. Heard. Uh, it, That's what the cop told me. Well, but if I'm a tra if I'm a passenger and I was unaware, if I was, I was just picked up on what if you're just an Uber driver? Does that still count if I'm a passenger? I don't know. We'd have to do like we'd have to, like, you know. I don't know. So if this the, is a guy, it, uh, he, wait, right. I'm confused. Are we talking about the identify spell? Well, about the thing of possession. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I uh, if I got into a car that the Uber driver had this item, is so it's on your horse. Yeah, it's in your sa it's in, it's it's your horse has it. It was a saddlebag. 
No, I just it's found not your horse. horse. I found You're riding horse. on the back of this horse with somebody else, <laughs> and it's in there. They offered Are me you a ride. possessing it? That's right. Exactly. I offered me a ride. Anyway, that's right. We're now. Uh, so the bottom line is constitutional U.S. constitutional law for two hundred. So if you can't, so once it becomes melded, yes, with you. That's, ah, well, so uh, he's given us his name. So it's David. So uh, David and eight points of con. Yes, you are. You you. You beat us to the punch, sir. That's right. He's he's commenting that uh, uh, identify as a complete troll job. It's a complete screw you players. Uh, that Bob the Conjurer, a has to be within. He's third level. He'd have to uh, start fondling the item within three hours of finding that the right. party found it, which again would be nearly impossible. Then um, he would have to put it on and take any of the cursed. Any effects that could potentially happen would have to be burdened on him. So if it right. was a if right. it was a cursed sword, sorry, Bob. You well, that's why it's hundred gold pieces. No, well, oh, wait, wait, no, that's right. No, wait, that's right. Wait, he's got a pearl of hundred gold pieces. The charge has got to be more. Or do I? My that's is right. it? Bring your own pearl. Is it BYOP? Well, yeah. Well, so because he's going to charge for the pearl. Right. He needs he needs to make a profit. That's his cost. That's, that's right. And the miniature carp don't come cheap. Right. And owl feather steep with wine. It's assuming none it's, of this is cheap. So his cost of materials alone is probably like what? Like is it was easily over. It's obviously over hundred gold yeah, pieces. Yeah, at least hundred and ten. So it's one hundred and ten gold pieces. Right. Then he needs a profit margin. What's and, the typical and, profit margin? Well. It's usually a hundred gold pieces uh, a level, to one to two hundred gold pieces a level, because there is no cost. Oh. See, so what happens is, dear dear friends, is in the dungeon master's guide there is no price list, generic price list for spell casting for magic users. For there clerics. is for is for clerics, and then later in the unearth they came out with uh, a rough guide for that. But if you look at the one on here for magic users, it comes out to uh, excuse me for clerics, it comes out depending on what it is. Between 200 to 400 gold pieces per level of the spell. So you have to not only, like the organ transplant, get not get that thing, either figure out a way to not possess it, right. or get it there really fast. Race it to the thing. You better have found an enormous treasure, so you better be able to go fast with all that treasure you've got. Right, and we didn't read any of this. Go ahead. So if you've got the wheelbarrow with all the treasure, that's slowing you down. You better have right. the guy run ahead with his right. coins jingling. Right, one guy's got the treasure, the other guy has the magic items racing back to town. But he better come with some coin. Right. Because it's gonna be like a few hundred gold pieces maybe, right? I mean, because the guy's, you know, he's gonna charge on top of the pearl. Right, and it sounds to me, though, I'm sure people have read it, I'm sure if we went in Dragon's Foot, the material components of the spell are the pearl and an owl feather steeped in wine with the infusion drunk and a live miniature card swallowed whole prior to spell casting. So you could argue, well, do they have to crush the pearl? Do, you know, because obviously if you ingest the pearl, at some point it's going to come available. back out. And he's got to be back out. And can you imagine if you're running up against the time? Right. You're like, I need to find a map fast. I'm running out of time. Yeah. They're not like, I don't think there's just a, is there an identify stand? Right. We're like, you know. He's just sitting out there. And can you imagine you and get there in the line? Trunk. And the right. line is <laughs> like so long. You're Everyone's like, tapping their foot. They're like, well, come on, come on. I'm running out of, they're holding all these items. That's right. And then you know what there is right next to him? Is the pawn shop. So right. if you don't make it in time, yeah, you can just you exit through that's what oh, I got it. You can have an identify shop. And like you know how there's these gift shops as you leave like at the mm -hmm. amusement park? Right. It'll be like a pawn shop, then we're like just a buy. Right? Yeah, this is total fantasy. This is total immersion. But the other problem is, as our fair, uh, as our fair uh, listener David has mentioned, that at the end of the spell, the spellcaster loses eight points of constitution. So he's really charging a lot of money. And you were talking about. Well, I'm sorry, I interrupt you. You talking about the carp business and drinking it? What? Yeah. You had so, some issue? so I'm sure people have read this saying, well, the pearl doesn't get destroyed at the time. You know, you could just oh, you pass, or you could at least pass it. You could pass it, but it sounds to me <laughs> that's a well, good point. But again, back it says if a, and again more craziness. If you're going to take a luck stone, which gives you plus one to saves and everything else, and powder it and add yeah. it to the infusion, it increases twenty five percent. All saving throws are made at plus four. Which again, by using the logic we had before, the fact that he gave that example that that's probably what you have to do with the pearl. You have to crush the pearl and oh. put it in there. But I'm sure there's been arguments, no, 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 that doesn't the case. So here you are, you're the magic user. You, it's, you're kind of like the pharmacist of magic users, right? You're a professional, but all you do is fill out scripts all day. You, no one cares about your, your knowledge or your wisdom. All they care about is 
I need this script filled. I need this identify. Oh, and yeah. so you spend your whole day being racked with pain because you're drinking pearls with carps and everything. You yeah, lose you know eight points of constitution. You know, you know who that is? Who that is? That, that's the C students in magic user school. They are. So they go to the magic user school. They don't do so well. Because you know, they're, what's the minimum intelligence you need to be a magic user? 13, I think. Nine. Nine? nine. nine? I think it's nine. So you're below average. You're average, average. Well, yeah, oh, I'm it's sorry. Right, you're a little right below. There. It's like yes. a nine. Okay, so you go to magic. You barely got in. The only reason you got into magic user school was because your mom paid the school <laughs> a bunch of money. You've been paid off. They thought you were on the crew team, and or the jousting team. That's right. In high school, right. you're in magic user school with it. With, it can you do say. a nine? It doesn't, it doesn't say here, I have to go to the actual magic user. Oh, thing. I thought it does. Doesn't it, it doesn't say minimum tolerance for magic. Oh, it, it does. It's just not where I found here. Yeah, no less than nine. Okay. So you had a nine intelligence. And you had a minimum dex of six. So you barely get through. You right. do some, you cheat, you whatever, you barely get through. Exactly. And basically what you're going to do is you're like, great. You went to the online school of magic use. Yeah, so there's like, right, exactly. And you get the degree. And your paid for you. You right. got your degree. It's the online, and it's, there's just like a, it's like a strip mall mm-hmm. kind of thing in the city, state, right. or wherever. And there's just like... You know, I, it just says, you know, a neon let identify, open. Exactly. Yeah, and that's what you do. You just sit there and you identify, and, and you pass the pearl. And and you pass a pearl. But that's what we called. Pass, pass the pearl. Pass the, <laughs> pass the pearl. <laughs> Writing that down. That's gold. Pass the pearl identify shop. Pass the, but, or you have to eat the pearl. And that's the thing. Are you passing pearls? You know, so again, I, like I love it. Oh, well, it, because then again, the cost is much less because if you could <clears throat> reuse the pearl, <laughs> which again, what's worse, the C student, the C st- or the, the apprentice of the C student? Hey, get the pearls from. I just went in the bucket. Go get the pearls. <laughs> oh, you're the pearl gatherer. <laughs> I'm the apprentice with my cantrip. Is there a cantrip for for cleaning poop up? That's the cantrip. <laughs> <laughs> That's the that's the cantrip I want. This is perfect. Extract, extract, scatological exam. Yeah, because you're exam. right. Because he stopped at zero level. Yeah, he failed out. Right. So like, he's or he's a, or he's or he's the 14 year old kid learn, trying to learn magic. Yeah, he's apprenticing. He's apprenticing. He's like, oh, he's like because the first level, third level, first level magic is still infinitely more powerful than most people. It's like, I'll, okay, son, I'll get you. I, I've got an internship for. You. I've got an apprenticeship for you. With who? <laughs> with, 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 with Uncle Saul. Uncle Saul, you can pass the pearl identify shop. Yeah. What? He's very, he's very talented. He's, he's very successful. He's a hack. No, he's not. Your Uncle Saul's not a he hack. He knows push and identify. That's more than you do. <laughs> he, he pushed that, he pushed that dude off the cliff. He pushes pearls out of himself all the time. It's great. So there you go. That's yeah. exactly it. So, yeah, so basically, yeah, this is, and so this is terrible. And, and then you're like, okay, even with all that, if I could figure out all the items there. Now, you, for each segment, you may then, so here's what happens. So, so then, yes, yeah, so it would be, I've always charged 500 gold pieces for identify. And it's a t- oh, and it's a turn. Right, but it's... Is that 10 minutes? It takes one, 10 minutes to cast, and then it's one segment per level, because each segment okay. you can identify a property. Because I may have like five items. All right. Oh, no, okay. it's just one item. I know, meaning if I've got five, I'm definitely tapping. I'm like, oh, but yeah, because this guy can't, can't do it. He can't do it. He's, he's got, let's say he has 10 what? constitution. He's, he's wrecked Oh, after that. my gosh. You right. can do one. So you're as you're running there with your magic items, you're gonna have to decide. That's why it'd have to be like uh, you know, there's like ten saws. There'd be ten past the pearl people there at the shop. Right, exactly. You need a big shot. Because once they do, it's a one shot deal, then they go they have to go rest and wait for the pearl. No, 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 no. Yeah. Well wait a second. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I guess a cleric can't help with the con issue. That's no. that's just you. That's a wish or alter reality, which no, makes that's, perfect whoa, sense. Whoa, whoa, that's getting way too all right. So then for again, uh, what will happen is for each segment, right? That happens. You have to make a saving throw. Uh, then, if you make a saving throw, then there's a fifteen percent per five percent per level per to know one property of the object. So you first make a saving throw. Mm-hmm. Each time a property can be known, the referee will secretly roll to see if the set magic has made a saving throw. If it's successful, the property is known. So you, you first you have a percentage chance to figure it out. Then you have to make a saving throw, and then you may figure out a property. If if it's one point short, a false power will be revealed. So you may it's not like you, I may give you a false power. Uh, if it's lower than no, okay. 
the item will never reveal its exact pluses to hit or damage both. So this is where we have all compromised. Sure. Because the reality is, if you keep track of again, the idea is the DM has all this information and they're keeping track of it and they know the player's characters better than the player does. And so again, that scenario, I want to attack to hit. What do I need to hit? I can't tell you. I'm not down. <laughs> yeah, just roll. You missed. All right. Or you hit. And then, you know, if you fight enough orcs, you're like, I think I need a 10. All right. I rolled a nine. I still hit. Ooh, maybe the thing's plus right. one. You know, you would, you would say it's low pluses or low charges. You wouldn't know how many charges are in a wand. You wouldn't know anything, basically. Right. So this is a complete, it's, it's literally a complete waste of time. And um, so again, that's rules as written. Oh, and, 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 and can we, uh, let's make this even more entertaining. You do all that, and then let's say he identifies it. Yep. He says the rod of X. Yep. Don't I need a command word? Absolutely. I don't know that. Like if I didn't get the, he's not right. So identify, I assume, does not identify the command word, right? It, well, it doesn't say it explicitly. It's in fact in the DMG. Now that we're going to segue into rod stabs and wands, which are um, why rod stabs and wands are so important, is because as a magic user, casting spells in combat is extremely dangerous, as we talked about. They have to stand still, motionless. They, if they have a dexterity bonus, they don't get that. It's very clear that they're casting spells and smart monsters are not just going to sit there and let them cast a spell. They're going to do anything they can to stop them from doing it. And if you have very little hit points, really bad. Uh, that's on page 119, I think. Oh, uh, yes, use of magic guys, 119. So, 119. so the benefit of, of, of rod stabs and wands, particularly wands, uh, because they're the highest charge, you'll find out. So. As we talked about, a rod is a, a device that's three foot long. It looks like a broomstick. A staff is your, your classic Gandalf staff that he's, you shall not pass. And a wand is Harry Potter-like uh, type of thing. I've got a, to, yeah, well, a foot and one, typically a one foot, one quarter inches long and slender. I've got that. DMG, 132. There you go. So, okay, so, and now, so let's, can we talk about command words? Because this right. is something that until I got back into the game and reread or read, the DMG I didn't know about, and I don't think we played with, which is that um, it, it's all three. It's, yes. it's not just a wand. Right. It's a rod, staff, or wand. It's usually, usually necessary to know the proper command word, right? So you've got to acquire it, the, the command word, right? Right. So there's several possible ways to acquire it. If it was in the possession of an opponent, it may be possible to learn the appropriate word or phrase directly, either by noting what he or she says when using the item. So that's so that's always an interesting one. It's just right. when the person uses it, and then the player says, do I remember? How do you handle that? Do I remember what he said? Well, I think if you play it right as a DM, and you say Shazam, and you see the guy, the, the great uh, the character in the back say Shazam, and something happens, if you say it, and they don't remember it, well, that's so sad too bad. I agree with that. But if you just say he, you, he points a stick and you don't hear the word, right? Um, then you kind of have to give him a break then, you can if, if you forgot to do that. I think that's right. You can divulge, of course, by force or trickery. And it's also common for spell users to keep such information recorded among their hidden scrolls and spell books in case their memories should somehow become impaired. So it's basically, it's like your password sheet. Right. For like all your passwords Which on is a computer. terrible thing. You would hope that you'd encrypt it somehow. You know, that's a... That, and you could do that. You could write it in magic. Couldn't you write, they write it if they somehow, and you have to do a read, right. ma a read magic spell? On. You would hope they would do that. Absolutely. Right. Um, but the point of all that is, it's not going to be as simple of, the easiest way is, unfortunately, this magic has to be used against you in order to figure out what it is. How does, so they say, so Gygax says that if it's not their handy, like you didn't hear it be said, you don't find, you know, the post-it, you know, with the password on it, the command yeah. word on it, you can use something such as contact other plane. Yeah. What is contact other plane and how does it help me figure out a command word? So you know? what's great about contact other plane is, first of all, so again, you're first, you're first level characters, right? This is the part that's the, another screw job. Contact other plane, I think, is a fifth level magic user or cleric spell. I think it's magic user. I can look that up real quick. Uh, it, may be, it may be that. Um, so it, it allows you to, to talk to a celestial or a other world being and ask questions of it. Oh, but why would that other being know? Well, that's, the, that's what you'd have to ask. Because, again, you'd have to, hey, do you know this thing? And it may or may not know it. Who makes... Who makes do magic users make rod staffs and how, how yes. do they create? They, yeah, so magic. So the the magic user that creates it, the creator, 
yep. imbues it with the command word. But here, all these powers are located at random. When the spell is cast, the magic user sends his or her mind to another plane of existence in order to receive advice or information from powers there. All these powers are located at random, and, res and they resent such contact in any case, and only brief answers will be given. The character can contact an elemental plane or some other plane removed, and then the farther you go away, the more likely you'll be in go insane, you could lose intelligence, <laughs> you could, uh, it, it, whether it'll know it or not. Um, so again, the DM starts has to start thinking, um, you know, so for instance, if there's a ring of fire resistance, may, and there was a command word, I don't know there isn't any, but let's just say for argument's sake, if you went to the elemental plane of fire, it's very likely that that creature that you reach out to would know the command word. Oh, so it has percentages for that they're going to know it. Okay. Right. I got and it. We'll and we'll percentage of telling the truth. So you may be told oh. not the truth. Right. So the point of all this is the, the players want certainty. They want to know, they just like in the video game. And part of, I think one of my things is later in the 80s, um, the D and D uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Gold Box from SSI came out. It was a, these were computer games that were based on Dungeons and Dragons, and I think a lot of people of my age were they were influenced because again they learned the game through the books and their permutation of it. They didn't have forums and everything else, so the, it was almost the canon came from those games. And back then, it just said identify 100 gold pieces, and it would tell you what right. it was. Sure, which. Uh, again, we just didn't read it. We just assumed identify was oh, it's a hundred gold pieces. So, um, players want certainty. None of these solutions provide certainty. Um, so whether it's uh, contact other plane, what was the other one you said? Uh, legend oh. lore. Yeah, what's legend lore? Legend lore is another fifth level magic user spell. So you're talking thousands of gold pieces. So yeah. So in other words, you may if you're for you spend a bunch of money getting this identified. Unless you have the identify spell, which is nice, right? I mean, you could, as the player, right. have identify. You could, but then it's eight points of constitution. You need a hundred gold, gold piece pearl. Oh, but the nice, so the benefit. Oh, so this is interesting. So if you have the identify spell, this, of course, now in some respects negates the need to rush out of the dungeon, but you better be prepared to rest. So you could you could do identify. So is, if you had memorized it, if you hadn't memorized it, if so, again back to that situation. If you if right. if Pixie had identify, and you guys open the chest, say okay, we're done. I'm going to memorize identify, mm -hmm. because well we're don't not going to possess anything. it. Don't That's possess right. it. That's we're right. going to rest. So do you think that look? I like to think that things sometimes make sense. What's the method behind the madness? Do you think Gygax was saying, look, I want to create an incentive for players to memorize, identify, to, you know, I mean, some benefit to having identify themselves, that, that you know, so you find the treasure. Mm -hmm. You're right. Don't possess, I don't know what possession means. Don't possess it, whatever that means. Don't We're going to it. rest here. Yeah. You're, when you wake up in the morning or whatever, after your amount of rest that you need, you're gonna, he'll memorize magic user, he or she will memorize, identify, yep. and then we'll cast it and, uh, ho and you'll know what it is. Right. But so, so the problem is, so most people won't have, they, they won't have identify, let's say. No one's gonna memorize identify in a good dungeon. Right, unless, but you could, I mean, if you have it in your book, you could right. at least rest and you could do that. The problem then is, so I guess the easiest solution, not that this is easy, but it's easier, is at a certain point if a magic user starts building up their spells, right? Because magic users can, and then this is another topic, but can get spells by, you know, from scrolls and copying them. Uh, we have we have a we have another question, which I think is a good one. Does a scroll of identify have all the negatives attached? Oh, that's a great question. So it I, doesn't require. I know. I, I, sorry, because I know I, I want to show off a little bit. Yes. I know that it doesn't. A scroll doesn't require the materials. And this doesn't really answer all the questions. That's right. But it doesn't require the material spell components. Correct. Right. So you wouldn't need the pearl, or the, unfortunately, you wouldn't need the. You need to go to the pet store for the miniature carp. Right. That's right. You wouldn't need the fish koi pond in the back of the right. koi pond to do that. So that's good. And the pearl, that, that's a cost, right? You don't need that because that's, that's, right. that's, that's a material spell component, right? That's right. You wouldn't need any of that. That's all been taken care of by the, the, the magic user who put it on there. And it would also be at a level at least seven, sixth or seventh level, depending on your point of view, when scrolls can be created. Uh, oh, that's right. Well, so that's another. We'll have a scroll 
discussion. discussion. We'll have a right. separate scroll. So it's going talk. to be at a higher power. So the question that our, our dear listener has asked, does, does the eight points of Constitution, does that still uh, get I, added to that? I know what my, I don't know the answer, but I'll tell you what my general, I would say yes, I follow your rule, which your rule is, if it doesn't say it doesn't, right. it does. Right. And, and, and we know that with scrolls that the components are not necessary, but that's not a component. Right. So it's, I don't know, what are your an, thoughts? That's an effect of, of casting it. And so for me, um, I would say that it would, they would be. It's just like the, tele, to me, the example I would give is the teleport spell. Uh, you, there is a percentage chance that something bad could happen to you. Uh, you could be killed with it because of the effect. That effect still happens whether you read teleport scroll off a scroll or not. So I think the effects of it, it's just the material components and you can cast it at a higher level than the, than the player was at the time. Now, and so this is it, and, and we need to, we'll do a separate one on scrolls. Right. Because I don't want to divert well, that's a great question. scrolls. It's a very good question. Is, and remember, there's a 5% to 30% chance uh, that a scroll not read immediately is likely to fade. We'll talk about that down the oh, road. Oh, yes. Now that right, um, and now the nice thing about scrolls, though, is you do not need to roll your chance to no spell, right? I got DMG right. 127. That's right. You don't have to roll, so that's nice. That's right. So, if you, if I, you're planning to use it, you just can use just it. Just using it right off the... Um, so, yeah, my vote would be, I think the two of us vote for yes, you would suffer, unfortunately, the yes. con detriment. But so I guess the benefit of having... Let's say you get... So let's say but you... That's, but that's, the, that's what our, our fair uh, listener is saying. If you had a scroll identify, that'd be great because you wouldn't have to. You wouldn't be using it, and that's what. That's why magic items are so powerful because they they allow you to do things that you wouldn't be able to do in the in the dungeon. You would never memorize identify in the dungeon. That's you'd right. Have to stop, so you would have a scroll of it. Now the right, but the benefit of the scroll again is getting into scrolls is that you can now write it. If you can write it into a, a, right. as long as it's within the range, not the range, not the level that you could cast it. You don't need to use a write spell. That's right. Correct? But and then so, you'd have to learn if you could mem- actually learn it. Then that's true, because really that's the real benefit. You want to really start loading up your spell book. But mm-hmm. but so now that is that is a good good point. We'll talk about the spell books and scrolls. So I guess right. the I guess the best case scenario for the player is that he or she either has a scroll or has identified as a spell. You find yeah. the treasure. Yeah. You don't possess it. You hunker down. If you haven't, cause you probably haven't. No one memorizes. I'm going to take. I, you're really optimistic when you're like, yeah, today identify. That's right. Because I just know. We're, we're getting it. We're getting it. <laughs> and, and, and in fact, we're going to destroy everything. You don't need my sleep at this spell or magic missile. I, I don't have to take it. You know what? Could you hire a magic user to come along with you? Saw. He's like the identify or Bob. Guy. Bob, yes. Bob the conjurer. He will travel. That's right. That's you right. know, you won't have to do combat. You know, um, and so you would then do the identify Or set up right your there. shop outside, like a identify truck, like a food truck. Well, like in uh, Treasure of Barlon, that magic user was camped out. Right. And they dun- you right. should just camp out in the dungeon. Right. Yeah, like point. right outside. Mm-hmm. Like keep on the borderlands. Yeah. You just set up your shop right outside. Right. I like it. And you just pay tribute to the orcs and all that stuff mm-hmm. so they don't kill you, right? Um, I think the, any of those would work. And it would be very in the spirit of pre-first edition, the gonzo kind of thing where someone's just chilling out in the dungeon with for no reason. Okay, I've got a question, though, about staff. You need a man, command word for a staff? Uh, depends. Yes, and depends on the power. Well, wait, it's a staff plus one? No, then you wouldn't need a command word. Okay, so the command word is to, com- is to perform some sort of magical. Right. Not just being, hey, I want to hit you now. I That's correct. my plus one. Yeah, and I would say, so like a rod of lordly might, it's default... It has a number of perm- ways it can be created, uh, you know, different weapons. You would need the command word to do that. But if its default is, a, you know, a stick plus one. So basically, so when you can't, so you got to get it identified in time before it melds with you. Yep. Because then, then no one, wait, so no one ever knows? Like, so when I find a wand, hasn't it melded with somebody else before that? Yeah, like, but that's the, then that person hopefully knows the command word. Well, wait, but, but but how does I so identify? Is identify lost once it melds with anybody? It you lost the previous ones, yeah. I mean, so let's say so I've got a wand mm-hmm. and I don't get it identified soon enough. Then then all the items would be lost. The way if you read it that way, it's never no one no one ever because it's melded with me now. So like right. I like leave it in the dungeon now and it's walk right. off, and someone finds it. So wait, that would mean then that if I bring it to the magic user to identify. 
uh, the DM would have to know whether or not it's previously melded with somebody. That's, yeah, that's right. So that you're, you're, they could be like, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. Right. And, oh, that still costs you money. Oh, right. He's got to like do the identifies. I can't do it. That's right. So there really should be a role first as to whether it's pre-melded. Right. Well, and like the case of Skargrog, the, the Black Dragon, did he possess the rod of cancellation that the cleric had? Wait. Yeah, wait. Aren't all these, these magic items have all been possessed. Who is not possessed? Who's not possessed a magic item? Right. So then you could rule that unless the, the last person who actually used the magic item successfully would be in possession. But then that r negates the rule of the, the hour per level. So that, that's I mean, a, most that's people just assume that they're not going to play do some sort of pre-possession rule, right? right? You need to get back. You get it. Do identified. we have that in our charter and our rules? Pre-possession rule uh, extension. We may need to add that no. to our rules. No, I don't know. You've about got it. some homework to do in, when you take your vacation this week. I know. I thought like twenty pages was enough. No, th not. there's a whole thing of what possession is when a magic item is possessed. Does that uh, automatically wipe out everything? What? How does that work? We. I don't know how I can play next week's session it's, without this information. You've you've been all wrong. Your whole life, your whole D and D life's been a lie. It's a fraud. It's a so so I got to race back. Yeah. Get there. Hope I find somebody. Right. In time. Um, give it to them, hope it works, they do identify, and then they're like, yeah, this is a wand of whatever. Yeah. And then I'm like, that's great. What's the command word? And they say, mm. I, don't I don't know. I don't do that. And if you don't have the command word, you basically then sell it to a pawn shop For saying, pennies I don't on the know dollar. the... Because you don't have any idea what it's about. Because I don't have legend lore or whatever. And so you right. sell it for 50 gold. So you lose money. You spent 200 gold pieces or whatever, identify, you find out... Then you forget, oh, I don't know the command word, and so then I sell it for 50 gold pieces at the pawn shop. So adventuring, I've actually lost money. Right. I risked my life and lost money. Exactly. It sounds like a lot Welcome of fun. Welcome first what, edition. What nights do you play? Uh, Friday. I can't wait to be there. Yeah, Fridays. <laughs> well, so they found a wand that they, you know, they did the old classic, put everything together and piled it up. And, of course, one of my players asked, hey, what, is this, uh, uh, what does this uh, thing do? I'm like... Uh, it's a wand that's magic. You're like, what do I look like, a magic user? Yeah, what do I look like, a magic do user? Do I look like I'm about to pass a pearl? <laughs> do I look constipated? I got some <laughs> right. pearls all jacked up. You see me? any miniature carp in my fish tank? That's right. No. <laughs> Who am I? Yeah, so he asked, hey, what is, uh, you know, what? I forgot the exact comment, but. Carps are pretty big, so is a miniature carp still fairly big? Yeah, that is, you know. Because how big is a carp? Well, a carp is large. So a miniature carp could be like, right. you know, I'm thinking well, it it's says a it's, And it says it's infused in it. So it sounds like it's blended in there. Like a blender? Yeah. It's like a carp smoothie? Carp smoothie with a pearl and a <laughs> luck stone, which you would, who would ever burn Delicious. through a luck stone? I mean, that tells me. The luck stone tells me this is a complete troll job by, in this Guy case. Gygax is laughing. Yeah, you're going to take a luck stone, which gives you plus one to saves, and, and you get right. other things, and crush it so you can get a 25% better chance of figuring out something. That'd be awesome. You know what? He does all that stuff, and he's like, yeah, this is a wand of luck stone. Right. <laughs> I don't know that there's no such thing. There is but, not such thing, but, but that But it would be funny, good. right? Yeah. That it's would. the equivalent of a luck stone that you just destroyed. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Okay, so let's, can we talk real quickly, because we so, do but again, need to so, so, back, so what I do, yeah. uh, because Identify is so broken... I actually tell them, look, you have to use legend law, which means it's 1,500 gold pieces, plus or minus, to cast that. Let's say that we do all that. Right. And it still doesn't give you all the answers. It gives you a thing. But, and the other compromise I do is, um, because the idea is, to all these are that, you, uh, there is that feeling of, we want to see bad things happen to the other players. That's, unfortunately, that's baked into the game. And the, some of the fun is when, you know, you put on the get, girl, uh, helmet of changing a, a, a right. gender, and everyone goes, ha, 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 or whatever it is. Um, so if as soon as they possess the weapon and they've used it in combat, let's say it's a sword, I tell them what plus it yeah, is. And I can Only so I don't have to manage that. Cause as you know, I'm, I'm, as I get older, I don't really care about it. Well, that. that's right. And the fact that you don't use identify, does, of course, doesn't mean that the player characters can't use the item. Right. So what it just means is you walk around and you use it. So you can point, I mean, well, if you don't have a command word, the wand, the rod, staff. well, the staff, you can wield Parts it and hit it, people yeah. on the head with it. Right. The rod. Depending on what it is. You're going to need, and, and, this, and the wand, you're typically going to need a command word. And so that is going to be a dud. Right. Until you, you're going to have to sell that thing, I or, assume, but on the cheap. Yeah, so you'd have to do an identify. For, well, the, the thing is, typically, the, the prices for selling is very extravagant. So it's, it would be an investment. You'd be taking a shot 
Uh, now, one of the things I do, and I just want you to, before you keep going real quick, is if you're following the rule, because uh, again, players have the Dungeon Master's Guide, which again, they're not supposed to, but this is the real world we live in. They all have the Dungeon Master's Guide. So when they see, they get a wand of whatever. Wand, staffs, and wands or rods are worth some of the most uh, uh, items in the, in the book. So if you found this rod of cancellation is worth 15,000 gold pieces, as an example. Mm -hmm. So back to experience points, if you uh, hold it, it's worth 10,000. So this is one of the items that's worth a stupid amount of experience points. But a lot of things, you get a lot more money if you sell it. You get, you get a lot, obviously you get money for selling it. And typically, if you sell it, you can. that's part of the treasure. And then you can divide that by the XP. So... Um, that's always the conundrum player characters have. If I keep this plus one sword, it's good because we get a limited experience points, but we have a better weapon. If I sell it, we get more money and we divide it by the players, and that gives us experience points, which is typically more than you would get. And if you, you right, if you keep the magic item, you get what ten percent? How does that work? So if you keep the magic item, experience. It, well, there's there's oh, it tells chart, you. It that's tells, what we've been through this before. It yeah, tells it's you it's typically ten percent, but right. you're right. It does tell you. I always thought it was automatically ten percent, but you're correct. It, but, it tells you the XP value in the and, PMG. And and the the other part with rods, stabs, and wands is it's based on a full item, which people don't read this asterisk a lot of times. So they'll want to sell their wand of magic missiles. They're like, oh yeah, that's worth thirty five thousand. But if it only has ten charges, it's only ten percent because the wand could have a hundred charges. Yeah, let's talk about that. So okay. wands need charges. Well, they all need charges. They oh, all have charges. They all need charges. Yes. Staffs. Yes. Staffs. They have, they have staves. Staves. Yep, they have between 1 and 25 charges. But that's not for like your staff plus 1. Again, that's just always plus right. 1, isn't it? Yeah, that's just a norm. That's a quarter staff. Not for performing. Right. Magical. So, Because that's actually in a separate table, typically. Like if in rod staffs and wands, they do not have staff plus 1 there. In miscellaneous weapons, they have quarter staff, if I remember oh. correctly. Okay. I don't think, yes. Yeah, so like a staff is striking or something? That's, do, I, that's, do I need a command word? Yes. Okay. I believe so because it has a special thing that it does, but I will look that up while you do that. And let me just mention about, I know at least with wands, I don't know if this is the same for the other yes. items. Is it, that, Go ahead. I was just going to say, you start, unless indicated to the contrary, wands have 100 charges minus 0 up to 19. Um, and so, right, yep. so you, you usually start with a heck of a lot of charges but unless you will identification identify the number of charges uh it will well it says it gives a range of charges oh the identification does okay yes. so at least but so if you don't get it identified you don't know so this is back to charges. the absolute versus yeah exactly absolute versus relative so you would have to know as a player that wands typically have zero to 100 so if i were to tell you low charges you go it probably has less than 30. Could and be, the, could be two and uh, the and the risk is, once completely drained, it's it will destroyed. become forever useless, crumbling to powder as its last charge is expelled. Right. Right? So that's, and I've got down here that wands are going to perform at sixth level, unless otherwise stated. So we have a default rule yep. for that. Um, and, uh, and then I just talk about command words. So um, wands... So uh, do you agree? So staffs Staff. Well, this staff is striking specific. needs a charge because... Um, this it's equivalent to plus three magic weapon. If weapon versus armor type adjustment is made, the staff of strike is always treated as most favorable weapon type versus any armor. So there you go. It causes four to nine of damage. This expends a charge if you strike. If two charges are expended, it's doubled. And if three charges are expended, uh, bonus damage is tripled. But it's only on the damage plus, not on the not on the d6. No more than three charges can be can can be expended per strike, the staff can be recharged. So if you hit, it uses a charge. Now you could argue, does it need a command word for that? Well, I think that's up to the DM to do that. Okay, because yeah, what does it say? Well, yeah, because it does say, generally, rods, staffs, General, and wands need right. a command word. It, it links all three of those together. So exactly. I would think, unless it says it doesn't, right, right. the default rule so would have be... Hasha, and, you know, <laughs> and nothing happened, right? Right, well, you would have to have hasha, bada, and shmiba. Yeah. Know, the, the big, you know, because you, you could choose between one charge, two charges, or three charges. I gotcha. And now the nice thing about wands, I know that's come up, is whether or not they strike automatically. And I believe we play that they do, right? So in Except, other words, we, we mentioned that, one of our other dear listeners reminded me that it depends on who's wielding the weapon. Oh. So a uh, wand of magic missiles, if a magic user uses it, it's an automatic. It's just like it's casted. 
And that raises the issue of, of that some only certain classes, you have to look in the DMG, right? There's right. parentheses, right, on the rods, tows, and wands on page 122, right? If there's a C next to it, in parentheses, it means a cleric only. Uh, M, magic user only, well, you could figure that out, right? F for fighter, T for thief, and then there are some any. So, um, so they can't be used at all, though, right? So like a wand, do you think a wand of magic missiles? Is any. Is any. But if a magic user uses it, it's, it's just like they cast a spell. If it's anyone else, they have to roll it to hit roll. And that's mentioned in the description. Correct. So yep. you obviously got to look it up, but in general, usually if it doesn't say something about missing, that's right. Right, it's, it's an automatic, it will hit. Right, it's like a, if it's a spell that's it's it's doing a spell of it, like the staff of striking, you still need to make a roll normal to hit roll because it's not automatically going to hit. Oh right, because it's it's the staff. That's what, right. So. But if it's a wand of lightning bolt, it will do what the lightning bolt does. Right. Okay. Now the other problem with that is clerics are. Does that include druids or not? So you still, um, I guess, most players characters, if you have a, a party that's trying to optimize their abilities they would hand the magic missile wand to the magic user. Why? Right. Because they have limited spells and it gives them something to do and it's an automatic hit. But you don't have to do that. You could give that to anyone, which is why they're worth so much. So the other challenge you have is you have to, so as, as Dan pointed out on page 122, it says wand of fire, M. Well, some M's, well, magic, uh, excuse me, illusionists are magic users. They're, they're a subclass of them. Mm -hmm. But in the player's handbook, it tells you which rods, stabs, and wands an illusionist can use that, uh, that are not precluded for them. Oh, okay. I've... So if you look at under uh, page 26, it says rod of cancellation, staff of striking, wands of enemy detection, fear, illusion, magic detection, metal and mineral detection, secret door and trap detection, and wonder. So they cannot use a wand of fire. Okay. They can't use a wand of frost. Good to know. Now, what's interesting is uh, they can't use a wand of paralyzation, but they can cast the spell paralyzation. That makes no sense. To that me. is interesting. Okay. Okay. So, so you got so on page twenty nine. If yeah. you're looking at uh, illusionists. Okay. Because you know I, you know as you know, illusionists are not my favorite class. I'm not a big fan of them. You know this. Right. I do know that. And gnome illusionists. Which means is I pretty, do like them. That's right. If you don't like them, I think them, they're I useless. Like However, uh, our dear friend who was playing uh, had cast paralyzation, and I'm like, this spells, and now after seeing it, it's amazing. It, you know, they were fighting a dragon, and it doesn't say it can't be used on a dragon. He shot, the dragon failed to save, and fell nice. to the ground. And Great. That's how they killed the dragon. So good for them. So I, my respect for illusionists went up, and now to the point I may actually play one because, they, you know, as a ex power gamer, they need le way less experience points mm -hmm. than magic users. Mm -hmm. They have some pretty good spells, and if you have a good DM that, that kind of will at least work with you on the illusions, it would be useful. So anyway, that's a quick sidebar. Okay, they've moved up in my rankings of of players as they they're not with the monk anymore. Okay, great. So again, what. I think rules as written is painful, and you have to have players who want to play the idea of finding the secrets, and, and th that requires more downtime, requires more one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with players, and if you don't have that time, you're going to have to decide how much you want to hand wave this kind of information. So what I do is, um, for normal items, identify, and it costs 500 gold pieces, and I will give them certain information. Um, other way you can get around that is you can give them intelligent items. If you give them intelligent items, the intelligent item will tell them, the, the person, what it does. Uh, and then you have another NPC that you can torture the players with. Uh, I also, and then later if they have, they can do speak with dead. But again, that's an interesting one. So you've killed the magic user you just defeated, and now you're talking to them. Does the, does the dead person have to speak truthfully to the thing? I don't know. Oh yeah, you got to the whole speak with dead thing, right? I mean, right. do they do they know you? Do they like you? Right. You just murdered them. Oh yeah, that's that's not good. Yeah. Right. Do do they have to tell them the truth? I don't uh, think they do. I think they react. Right. They well, that's a whole other issue. Right. right. Well, that's, they react accordingly. It's whereas con yeah, it, I would use it like contact other plane where it says they can lie to you or tell you yeah. things. So, um, you know, then you also have limited wish, which of course. These are very powerful spells, and, and players hate to use these things to find out, because you could do a limited mm -hmm. wish and say, I, I want to know every ability and the command words of this item. 
Okay, you're going to use a seventh level spell to do that? Probably not. So um, it really comes down to how much of this you, you, you want to put in, and then you're going to have to deal with the paperwork with it. So because I have a lot of players and I don't know what they have, and I just I don't want to deal with it, I basically tell them more than it is. Um, because if you play it the right way, like for instance, a ring of three wishes, it says a ring of three wishes looks like a normal ring of invisibility or something like that. It's, it's, and you're supposed to kind of think, and if someone were to say, hey, I wish this, and you're supposed to go, oh, I wish that. So anyway, I think we've talked about this enough. Um, any other comments, rods, stabs, and wands? No, nope, no. Nope. So I think the next time we'll go through scrolls and we'll go through okay. a couple of the items. But uh, the short version is you as a dungeon master decide what level it is. Rules is written. can either be a lot of fun or painful depending on your point of view and depending on your players. Or um, I don't think you should just give away the farm. So you sh- should make it some money and keep, try to keep some mystery. All right. So for our suggestion uh, of, of the week... Um, Dan, do you have a suggestion for this week? Yeah, so um, I think you were mentioning our listener, Dave, right? That's right, right Dave, uh, that's right. From uh, Australia? Is I right? believe he's from Australia, at least that's what his uh, number says. Right, so. has put together a book, right? Uh, uh, an uh, online uh, book. There's a number of books that he sent to us, and I started reading, you started reading it, and um, trying to simplify first edition. So I yeah. sent it to you. And yeah, and I thought it, it, they do a great job, and so definitely recommend them for any of our listeners or viewers out there who are trying to... Uh, wrap their brain around and get a better grasp of the rules for 1E. Highly recommend those. Uh, it really helps simplify it and, and explain it in a very easy to understand way. And I believe you got, uh, did you say you have a link for a... Uh... Yep, I'll put it in the show notes so you can get to right. it as well. Um, so that's my suggestion. Yeah, and hope you fail because um, it's clearly a work of love uh, of first edition and tr- you know it's not, a, it's not a how to learn Dungeons and Dragons I mean, or role playing. It, it, it has that. But it's really about first edition. It starts with the player's handbook. Um, and like anything, I'm sure you could quibble, just like with our thing, um, you know, are we interpreting the rules as written or is there some other thing? But uh, for the uh, 95% of it, I found it to be very helpful. You know, it really comes, we're, I think we're all trying to bridge the gap between people who are just being, uh, who are listening and not playing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what was made it a great uh, read and uh, you know, based on I see him updating it, so I think that's a great suggestion. I've I've read part one. I'm start on on part two, which is he has a player's handbook. Uh, then, which is I think I showed you, sent you the link, a dungeon master's guide. Then he has basically player classes explained. So it's a lot of material. And if you're not playing, I don't care what edition. I prefer first edition, but if you're not playing an old school game, there's plenty of resources now uh, to do that. So I hope you fail your suggestion on that. For me, um, you know, my suggestion is going to, I talked about Paranoia, um, another game that I'm looking to um, run it's, is um, Star Frontiers, which will be the next mm-hmm. TSR. It, and, and it's kind of a gateway drug uh, into other games. So, you know, if you came from my background, Dungeons & Dragons was the game. That was the only game for a while. And what's nice about Star Frontiers, it's basically Dungeons and Dragons in space, and you can get uh, you can get in the box set or PDFs, drive through RPG, and it was a nice segue. You get a different theme, like we talked about last week. Um, but I remember a lot of fun because again, you play uh, space cowboys and space pirates, um, and and but the mechanics, even though they use percentage dice versus things, it was it felt pretty similar. Like you had you know. Uh, laser armor or Gauss armor, I forgot what they're called. But so uh, you know, our paranoia thing is coming. So probably the next game I would probably run as part of the Grog Con at Crucible would be Star Frontiers. Uh, those would be probably the two games because I'm hoping we'll get enough players, enough DMs to run uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So um, with that, you're not going to be here next week, so I'm going to have to figure out. Some event. Enjoy your vacation. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be headed off uh, in a few weeks, but right now uh, I'll be here. So I'm going to figure out. I may either be solo or get one of our guests to come on. Uh, the other thing we're looking at, I think there's been some interest. You know, I, I think we need to do an online um, uh, session for our for our listeners. Um, so I'm so if you're interested in playing in a streamed game, uh, we would probably you know find a time where I would either run or Dan would run, and, and the other one would play. 
Uh, you know, if there's people out there, send us an email, info at grogcon.com, and uh, we'll probably post it on Meetup. So you need Skype and you need access to Roll20, and that's how we do it. So most likely I would do it the first time, and it would be for four or five players, so it would not be completely combat-driven. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, info at grogcon.com. Uh, again, thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. Please give us comments, because this, this is the stuff that keeps us going, because even though Dan and I like talking, um, it's always nice to know that people re- uh, enjoy this. And so we really appreciate the comments. Not just from Dave, there was uh, a, another gentleman uh, sent us thing in the info line. Um, so we're really looking forward to it. So I'm James. I'm Dan. And uh, thanks for listening to Grog Talk and have a great day. Let's see. Let me oh. stop. All right, I got to race out of here. Yeah. I'm behind.